Hi, pretty boy. Hi, pretty boy. Ha, you're not a pretty boy, are you? Just got home from uh, working, buying logs. That's my job. I get home and here's Nick getting a pair of horses ready to hitch. Uh, Elvis, and we're gonna hook him with Sailor and they are a nice team together. Um, we mix and match a lot here. Today it's Elvis and Sailor's turn. We're gonna take them up a big hill a few times uh, on a really light load and just kind of harden them in and get these horses acting good. Uh, Red Boy here has a day off. I don't know how, but he lost a shoe. He wasn't in mud, he wasn't outside, he didn't get tangled with another horse. He lost a shoe. It happens. We'll put it back on. Well, first we'll try to find it. And then we'll put it back on. How was your day, Nick? It was fine. Cool, man. It is cool, man. Yeah. Well, we got them acting pretty good. We are so lucky, the horses we drive here. We uh, we just love them. They're a good bunch of horses. Uh, that's what makes us go around is, is the horses. People give credit to us, but... The credit goes to these guys. Look at that eye on Elvis. Just such a smart eye. The way he uses his ears. And then look down here at our friend Rusty's horse. That's a horse right there. You're going to see him in the front of some lightweight classes before he's done. Anyway, we're going to keep on harnessing up and get him hitched. And we're going to talk about a few thoughts about uh, an auction we're going to tomorrow. Thanks a lot, folks. Might be snowing, but spring's here, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, as I said, we're going to a horse sale tomorrow. Uh, I'll talk about a few more thoughts about going to horse sales. I know I did a little episode about horse sales here a while ago, but let's uh, let's talk about it a little bit more. Um, in fact, let's. Uh, start by giving you an update from that last sale we went to. Uh, that was the Mount Hope sale. I went to two. Uh, Mount Hope, Ohio. Mid-American, uh, not mid-American, uh, mid-Ohio sale. Uh, boy, horses sold well. <coughs> they had a pretty good quality this year. Uh, a little better quality horse than normal. Uh, and they brought good money. Uh, the soft spot in the market, two-year-olds. No idea why. You get a yearling cheaper than a two-year-old. Three-year-old, the price goes up sharply. Um, Seems to me that's a bargain. I mean, I know guys want to take a two-year-old home and work it, and that's a little bit young to be working a horse, but if you can afford to wait a year, the, the price difference has been worth it. We went to a Mount Hope sale in Ohio and then Romulus, New York, and uh, that was a pretty good sale, too. Uh, fairly good quality, and uh, horses brought what they should. Um, two-year-olds were a little soft there as well. As always, a lot of your best deals are older horses. Um, a lot of people are afraid of age. That's a nice, sound, white gelding. I'll go for $1,800 up there to uh, the sale. Up to Romulus. Um, not a thing wrong with him. 13 going on 14 this spring. Uh, not a thing wrong with that horse. Uh, just had a little age. He was a fairly good size horse, too. Um, so he brought 18. So the hard thing about that is, I can stand there and tell you that horse brought $1,800. And he did. But, that doesn't mean you'd have bought him for 18. I mean, maybe the person that bought him would have, you'd have been the back better and he'd have ran you all the way up to three. Maybe he liked him that well. So uh, you never know. You know, you can't definitively say because a horse brought 18 or 18,000 or whatever price that that's what you could have bought him for. And you can't go home and kick yourself in the ass saying, ah, I should have bought that horse, so he only brought this. No, you don't know. He could have brought double that if you started raising your hand. Um, 
know if he needs that bit with all this. Well, we're going to work this team, and I'm going to talk about sales a little bit. You know, the first step to buying a horse at an auction, private sale, or anything, don't be afraid to walk away without buying a horse. You know, if the deal's not right, heck with it. You know, I mean, <laughs> there'll be another deal. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, make sure you wait for the right deal the, the, or the exact horse you want. I mean... You know, don't don't go out and buy a 18 hand, you know, sorrel horse if what you wanted was a 17 hand bay. If that's what you want, we'll sell you one. <laughs> uh, oh well, V. Let me give you a few practical tips on horse sales. Uh, the first thing you should do is know how big a horse really is. Their weight is a little difficult to. Uh, to quantify. It's a little difficult to tell. Uh, the height is not. Learn where on your body a certain mark is. I've found for most draft horses, 17 hands is a really handy mark to know where it is. Now, maybe you're into a little bigger horses. Maybe you want to know where 18 hands is. Put a mark on a wall or a, a um, Use one of those rulers that they sell with a level on it or something. Find out where on your body 17 hands is. For me, I knew this when I was 12. Well, I've grown since then. But all my life, I've known where 17 hands is. And since I've been about 16 years old, it hit me right on the lips. Usually, I wear a little bit more heels than these rubber sheep boots. <laughs> Muck boots, whatever they are. Uh, farmer's boots. And, uh, but usually it's right about my lips. Uh, I am standing downhill, but right here's a mark at 68 inches, 17 hands. Know where that is on your body, and then you won't get fooled. You won't walk up to a horse. Elvis is 16.3. He almost knocks on 17. A little bit more shoe, he'd be 17 hands. Uh, same with Sailor Man. Boom, same height. Uh, and these two are a darn good example of that. Uh, I do sailor for a year and a half. And I always thought he was smaller than Elvis. A really good horse. He just wasn't quite as big as Elvis or built the same. Last fall, he came up here to get worked. And he spent a month up here. And he is a mirror image of Elvis. And you'd never know it because of the color. Elvis is this bay colored. Sailor is a roan, but boy, the length of neck. They're both wearing a 28 inch collar that fits the same. Uh, Elvis is just a little bit fat right now. He's gonna lose that, aren't you, big guy? Sailor's in about right body condition. They match. I mean, the, the, the confirmation, the, the slope of shoulder. Boy, they, most of our horses have a good slope of shoulder. Uh, the hips, the, the muscling on the rear, the back. These two match right up. And if you looked at them as individuals, you wouldn't know that. Um, so, but if you walked up to Sailor and said, 16-3. If you walked up to Elvis and said, 16-3 for hands, you'd say, boy, they come close. Then you'd think about it. And then you'd say, what size collar is he wearing? And what size collar is he wearing? And then you'd start to realize. And then you'd, you'd have a lot more of a, a baseline. Um, and it, that's how you put teams together if you have one to match. And as far as that goes, uh, putting teams together, let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, if you want a pair of horses, it often seems like the cheapest pairs out there are a mare and a gelding together. Um, I don't know why. They never bring as much as a, I shouldn't say never, seldom bring as much as a pair of geldings or a pair of mares. A mare and a gelding just don't quite sell as much as good. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's, I've worked lots and lots of mares and geldings together for years. And there's nothing wrong with it. And you can buy them a little cheaper. So use that to your advantage. 
And uh, you see a lot of nice teams go through the sale ring and match right up nice. And usually they bring what they're worth. People know. People say, man, there's, there's a sharp pair of mares and, and you're going to pay the long dollar for them. You're going to pay a good dollar for them. Uh, a more economical way to do that most of the time, you know, whether you want mares or gelding, whatever you want, buy two individuals. Uh, a lot of times you can find a single horse that, that brings a pretty cheap, affordable price. You wait a little bit longer in the sale and uh, uh, you get another one just like him and you put a team together you could save several thousand dollars sometimes by doing that. And it's uh, it's worth saving that kind of money. Now you gotta have an eye for it. Think about the horses. And, uh, but those deals are, are out there. Well, of course they're out there. How would, you know, say I consigned Elvis to a sale and there was another bay that weighed 1950 or whatever fat boy weighs. He's probably over a ton, but by God, he's going to get down to 1950. Uh, that's just too fat. That's not even healthy to have him that fat. But anyway, uh, say I had Elvis consigned to the sale. How would I know that eight horses later, there's another bay that weighs 1950 consigned? You know, <laughs> the two of them together can uh, can often bring a pretty good. Uh, be pretty good deals and if you bought the two of them you got yourself a team so that's a good practice in my opinion the and opinions are like assholes everybody's got one and I seem to be heavy on opinions sometimes in my opinion the last thing you want to look at is pedigree I'm not discounting a good pedigree but I think a lot of uh Horses that are common as a dollar bill or, or worse, even poor horses, bring a lot more than they should because they carry a good pedigree. Um, you know, pedigree means nothing out there in the field or in the woods. It, and the, to be honest with you, pedigree means nothing in the pulling ring. Look at this. He's just too fat. Ugh. Today's April 5th as we're filming this. We got about a month to get him down in shape. It should happen. Good nutrition, hard work. Elvis has done less work than the other horses here lately. Uh, mostly because uh, we've been training some young stock and while everybody else is getting work, he's been standing around. But um, yeah, I mean, I look at, I always think back, I was watching the show on the History Channel about race horses once. Uh, Modern Marvels, it was called. And it was, uh, this particular episode was about racehorses. And they were those, you know, weanlings that are bringing millions of dollars that you would watch at the Kentucky Derby. And that's funny because every once in a while, uh, uh, you know, somebody who's an underdog by a lot, 50 to one long shot, like uh, my Nat Bird is going to win. You know, a bunch of cowboys owned him. <laughs> and, and he beats all those really expensive horses. My Nat Bird did around 15 years ago. Uh, anyway, on this show, the trainer was taking the History Channel uh, camera crew around, and, and he says, uh, tell you what, I look at, uh, I just noticed something. Anyway, he said, I look at uh, confirmation of the horse. That tells me how fast they're going to be. And when I get that done, I look at the pedigree, because that tells me how much I'm going to pay. And there's a lot of truth in that. A lot of truth in that. You know, you look at the pedigree last. I'm not discounting a good pedigree. I mean, you know, I love my CD Rock breeding and Boggs Creek breeding. And, uh, you know, there's just something about a good pedigreed horse. But uh, and I'm not discounting it for a minute. But I am saying that there's some good horses without any known names in the in the background or good deals you know
tell you something else. If, if you're farming or logging and, you know, you're like me, you're not terribly fussy. <laughs> I, uh, look right past color. You know, sometimes you pay for color. I think the next up and coming trend in the Belgian business is roams. And I think if you have a 10 year old roan mare uh, with the same background and the same training, same confirmation as a 10 year old sorrel mare, the roan is gonna bring a 1, thousand, 1500 bucks more because she's roan. Um, and if you're talking about mare, that might not be a bad practice because her colts are all gonna bring more. Um, and, and what I'm saying is, if you don't care, if you don't care about color, you know, buy that sorrel horse, buy the off colored horse, buy the Percheron, the black Percheron with a full white stripe. You know, they're not as popular as a, a Percheron without markings or one with just a star. Um, you know, buy a plain faced Belgian. They bring a little less money than a Belgian with a stripe. You know, that kind of stuff can, uh, can really help if you don't care. Personally, as far as color, I, I don't think there is a bad color. And uh, my kids are always asking me uh, what, what my favorite color horse is. I don't really have an answer. It's, it's like when I used to keep coon hounds. I wanted one of everything. I wanted a brindle plot hound and a black plot hound. I wanted a blue tick. I wanted a red bone. You know, I wanted one of everything. Loved black and tans. Um, and then that's how I am with horses. You know, I love bays. I've had a couple good bays. Um, I like the, the standard sorrel with a white striped Belgian. I also like roans. You know, I like gray percherons. I like black percherons. You can't hardly name a horse color I don't like in the draft horse business. Um, and I don't care what I work together. I don't care if I have a gray and a, and a chocolate brown horse together. I don't care. If they go together and work together, that's what we're driving, you know. I'll tell you, I know we're skipping along here, going back and forth on different subjects. But I'll tell you a little story it happened to my brother. My dad likes to tell this. Well, you like to. Dad, dad's gone now. But, um, my dad always had raised platforms uh, on the cow barn, you know, back in the old stanchion and tie stall barns. And he had raised platforms. And I see uh, Jim Gordon on Jim's channel. Jim has raised uh, stalls. They're up two inches higher than the than the walkway. And uh, I love that. It makes your horses look tall. And uh, my brother went to a cow auction and he had nice good sized Holsteins at home he was milking. And my dad said, you ought to buy a few of those cows. And Mike bought two of them and he should have bought five or six of those cows. And uh, he got them home, and he said, they're just not big enough. That's why I don't want to buy them. They, there's just no room, you know. Uh, got them home, and uh, they were bigger than anything he had on the platform. It was the raised platform at home and the level platform at the sale that fooled him, and he didn't realize. And, uh, you know, a lot of things like that can fool you. you Maybe a set of shoes or something like that. That's why it's important to, to know where certain milestones are, markers are uh, on your horse. Looks like we got poop to clean up. Know any good poop jokes, Nick? Uh, not really. Oh, come on. Hey, buddy. I know I've already told this one on, uh, on this channel, but we'll tell it again, you know, because that's what I do. I tell the same joke over and over. You know why... Uh, Mule poop is a lot better for crops than horse poop. Why is that? Longer ears. Uh huh. You want good long ears on your corn, don't you? Yep. Here. Gosh, Elvis. They love to put me to work. Yeah, don't get your sale catalog. And look through it and see the bloodlines that, that do it for you. And make up your mind those are the horses you want. Do it the opposite. Walk, go to the sale. Walk up and down the aisles. 
And when you find a horse that catches your eye, then you look at the pedigree. Um, and every once in a while, you might be fooled. You might have a horse with a pedigree you never cared for. And, uh, sorry, I'm a little distracted here. I'm thinking about something, and I'll point it out in just a second. Um, anyway, you'll have a horse with a pedigree you don't care for that turns out to be a, an absolute, the type of horse you want. And that's more important, you know, uh, especially in a gelding or a, a working horse. And I, I deal a lot with geldings. Um, let me get this boy harnessed and I'll, I'll show you what's distracting me. I'll tell you something too. If you have two horses that don't match, you know, maybe a little for color, maybe a little for size, you get those horses home and uh, you get them working together well. You get them harnessed up well. You get them fitted good to where they're in the right flesh and, and, and everything's good on them. The way it should be, unless there's a pronounced difference, you won't hardly know the difference. Obviously, I mean, if you've got a gray and a, you know, maybe you've got a black and a... And a a roam together, you're going to know that. But my dad and I together for years worked his stallion, the Elvis's old grandpa, Fury's commander bred horse, Percheron, with my mare. And my mare was 17-1. Uh, she went about 1850. The stallion was about 163, and he went about a. Uh, he'd be awful lucky to hit 1800. And when we had them hitched, and I'll try to insert some pictures here, when we had them hitched and stepping together and acting right, you'd think they were a match team, and they didn't match. I mean, the mare was up on legs, tall, long neck, stylish. The stud was a stud. I mean, you know, like a lot of studs, he didn't have as much rear as he should have, uh, or as he could have. Um, you know, he had a stud looking hat, which is good. I mean, you want, <laughs> you want masculinity and femininity in your horses. Um, but they didn't match. But you get them in harness and looking right together, and, and you'd think they matched. And you can do that. You know, you can do that yourself. I mean, you can make a pair of horses that don't particularly look like they're going to match. And, and, you know, you can go to a county fair or a parade or something where people, you know, people that aren't true horsemen are looking. They say, how do you tell them apart? <laughs> You know, you, the horseman, you're thinking, oh, I know how you tell them apart. The one has a star on his head. The other one is bald face, or I mean, plain face. You know, one is 17.2, the other one's 16.3. You know, one weighs 1,900, the other weighs 17.50. But when they look a lot closer to matching once you get them working together well. I'm just telling you that because when you go to a sale, sometimes you can get a good deal because. Had a little accident here. <laughs> Nick was being goofy and playing with the horse, and the horse knocked the phone out of his hand. Oh, yeah, we need to hold back here. Here is your most typical farm problem. We can't find where we put something. I think this is it. Which horse do we unharness first? We unharnessed Mage first. This has got to be Sailors. Yeah, we're going to hook Sailor on the... Uh, we're going to hook Sailor Man on the... I wish I would come up better. We're going to hook him on the uh, offside today. Just to keep him fresh and switched up. 
So, you folks at home that are paying attention, sailor is going to be on the right side. Generally, you do want to snap face into the outside, so nothing. it's less likely to get stuff hooked into. Uh, this is all fitted to him. Um, since we switch sides often, I'm not going to bother changing that snap. Um, but it's a good idea if you do. By the way, this is not my preference uh, for a martingale, for a breast strap. So this is the quarter strap that I have in my hand that I hook under the belly. Quarter strap. Martingale, the piece that goes right between their front legs. This is the breast strap up front. Now, if you look at this combination snap, that's what this is called. And you have a neck yoke on here and, and we're on a log cart and my log cart um, hits a rock and wiggles. Look what happens to sailor's collar. And when a collar wiggles, that can cause a sore. Now let's come up here to Elvis. Elvis has a different style harness with the chain. This uh, chain is what we have for a breast strap with a big snap that slides. Now, we're hooked to the neck yoke, we're hooked to the cart, we hit the same rock, that chain slides back and forth and the collar stays still. It's a step better than the other version, but that's what came with those harnesses and we are not going logging today, we're going out on smooth ground so Sailor Man will be fine. Um, better yet, look back, you know, when you're on a cart or something with a tongue, Look back through these videos, any of our login videos, the D-ring is the ultimate harness for being on a tongue, especially something with a heavy uh, tongue weight. But, um, you know, this guy's a pulling horse. Whoops, buddy. This guy's a pulling horse, and he came with a pulling horse harness, and it wasn't a D-ring. In fact, he didn't even have quarter straps or anything because he, he never gets hooked to a tongue. Um, we had to put our quarter straps from Martingale on here. And, uh, you know, if all you are is a pulling horse, you're not on a tongue, you don't have to worry about your collar moving. Oh, I was saying about being distracted. This is what got me thinking. Uh, Sailor and Elvis are in the same collar. Lagodi collars, 28 inch. This is a full Sweeney here. Rusty likes to call it a three-quarter Sweeney because it's not quite cut away up there. 28-inch uh, Hames. And Mage is in the same exact thing. 28-inch collar, 28-inch Hames. Top notch on the, on the ratchets here. Top notch. LV, 28-inch. That also looks to be a full Sweeney. Uh, why in the world is he in this notch? On 28-inch Hames, he's in this notch, and that's a good fit. And the other guys are in this notch, huh? I don't know, but what? It just that kind of picks my brain a little bit. But it doesn't matter. Both, if you look, both Hames are fitted well. The collars fit well, and so do the Hames. No gaps through here. Everything fits like it's supposed to. You know, one thing I go by at auctions, now, <laughs> take this with a grain of salt. I have sold exactly one pair of horses at an auction, and I have uh, bought zero at auctions. I like to do private deals myself. My dad bought a handful at auctions and sold some private, or sold some. Most of what we do is private deals. Anyway. Your first impression is very important. You go through that sale barn and what catches your eye is what's real important. And you're probably right with that first impression. Okay, we'll end it here. Got Elvis and uh, Sailor hooked together. Get back here and show them from behind, Nick. Um, wanted to show you how well they match. Sailor is just a touch taller than Elvis in the hips. That could be the shoes. Sailor's got rolled heel corks. Elvis has teeny little flat shoes. But walk on around them. These guys are dead ringer for confirmation, for size and build, length of neck, everything. 
Um, and you'd never know it unless you really inspected them good, inspected them well. It's because the color will fool you. So, uh, but once you get them hooked up, the, the truth of the matter is sometimes when I'm in different configurations and they're hooked with other horses, Elvis and uh, Sailor share a harness and collar sometimes uh, just to make it easier. And I don't change a single adjustment. They are the same horse from front to back. And you'd never know it. <clears throat> the color fools you so much. Okay. You might make Elvis is still working on being buddy sour with his mama when she's over here in the run-in shed across the street with young Ziggy. Uh, Nick's got some work to do. We're going to the auction tomorrow. He's going to check the oil and check the tires. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a flat tire, I've always said. So I'm going to take these guys alone, and I got them on the log cart. I only have a short time, but still we're going to get some work into this horses because that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, I'm going to hook to that tire, or I'm hooked to the log cart, rather. And when I get up the road, I'm going to hook to a tire. And uh, it's the same tire I used to brake Ziggy, so it's not a much of a load, but we are going to head up a hill with it. And we're going to work this team on that and uh, just get them in shape, get them handling, build their wind, build their muscle, all that stuff. And Nick's going to get some stuff ready at home, and tomorrow is horse sale day. A.J. Newman wrote the vet column in the Draft Horse Journal for years. Great writer, great veterinary, and he really knew draft horses. And uh, he was wrote often about too long of a hame strap, too short of a hame that was looped down around the sides of the collar. That's just what we have. Look at uh, Sailor's. Fits well. Look at Elvis's. That doesn't fit near as well. And I did have just beginnings of a sore neck on Elvis last year when he was working hard in that harness. I'm going to change that. They're going to be more like sailors and more like George from Jim Gordon's video said. The width between the ears should be that top hame strap. I'm going to fix Elvis up the same way because they're both 28 inch hames on 28 inch collars. But I don't have Elvis's adjusted on top as well. So make sure your hame strap is level on the way across the top. Got Sailor and Elvis out doing their work here. We're on the log cart with a little tire behind us. Moderate sized tire, but heading up a good hill with them. We're just putting legs on these horses. We're teaching them how to walk good, stand up in the tugs, how to use their feet. Whoa. I think they're a pair of six year olds and it just like the Colts, you look at Sailor leaning into it and Elvis. Just like that uh, yearling and, or a uh, two-year-old and three-year-old, we're teaching them how to stand up good and stay in the collars. Um, you know, it's reinforcing the same lesson never hurts. Awful good work for a horse. A lot of miles on a light load really, hey, helps a pulling horse. Uh, good team right here. Boy, I like driving this team together. Um, but yeah, this is the woods we logged last winter. We, <laughs> it's, uh, Halfway through April, not quite, but close to halfway through April and snowy. But there's the tire. It's a loader tire we're hauling. Ooh. Ooh. Good boys. So, well, start them out. God, didn't really do them any favors. That was my fault. I didn't start them like I should. Trying to drive and film with one hand. I guess if I can do it, that'd be a good sign because the owner of Sailor has one arm. He lost it when he was 18. And, oh, he needs to be able to handle horses. I like to go a good distance. Whoa. And then rest them. I don't like to push them so far they're downright tired, but I don't like to go so short that uh, they bump it, you know. Um, 150, 200 feet, something like that is good on a, going up a hill like this, especially when they're soft. When they get hard, I'll bet they'll go all the way up the hill. As fat as Elvis is, he's most of the way being hard and in shape from logging all winter and doing what little plowing he did. You notice Elvis, if you look at his flank here, isn't puffing much. Sailor is. Sailor hasn't done much since last fall, but that's why he's here, to get in, uh, get in shape. Elvis might be in shape. He's, whoa, whoa. He's still got to lose some weight. Whoa. 
Whoa. So goes my driving, huh? Go switch hands. Now I started them with the lines that time. There, I guess I drive a little better with my right hand than I do my left. Okay. Nice team of horses. Really, I know it's snowy in the spring, but it's a nice day. When you can get a team of fine horses and go out in the woods and go on a nice scenic drive like this, it's a good day. You don't, you can't complain about weather. Whoa. Whoa. Well, just following up, showing you why we were hitching these guys. And uh, again, there's what we're hooked to a tire on our log cart. And that's what we're doing, getting everybody hardened in and continuing their training. Thanks a lot, folks. I've always thought farm kid tough is a lot tougher than weight room tough. And, uh, you know, if weight room's all that's available to you, that's what you got. But along those same lines, I believe a horse that does a lot of work, farm work, is a different type of tough and strong than a pulling horse. Uh, I think you work every group of muscles. You know, you can't build big triceps, biceps, without having some equal triceps. You're you're unbalanced. So we're going to head down this hill. Watch these horses, even with a tire behind, this is fairly steep. Watch these horses sit in the britching. Look at there, sitting right in that britching, and pushing back, and that's working a different group of muscles. And I believe that's really important to have an overall strong, healthy horse if you can work all the groups of muscles like that. Um, whoa. Just, uh, just a more balanced horse, the more you do with them.